Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody at GitLab. This is the 12.6 retrospective, or summary retrospective, as it were, because there are several retrospectives going on. My name is Christopher Lefoltz. I'm Senior Director of Development, and I will be emceeing this retrospective. Uh, we've had great uh, information, even in a shortened uh, a shortened development time frame given the holiday season uh, the month of December had. Uh, we still had 26 or 22 uh, teams to do uh, async retrospectives and provide information up and looks like we've got some good results to talk about and discuss. Uh, this consists of four sections. Uh, the four, first section is to talk about previous tasks. Then we talk about uh, what went well, what went wrong, and how we can improve. And then last but not least will be uh, action items we want to track to the next retrospective. So I guess technically it's five sections. Um, I will talk very quickly, uh, but first we'll start with the first section where we'll uh, share and uh, the previous retrospective and improvement tasks. So uh, Chris, do you want to verbalize uh, what's been going on with the first one? Sure, I'm Chris Baus, the uh, Fulfillment uh, Front-End Engineering Manager, and I want to talk about some of the issues that we've had with um, waiting issues, specifically uh, for the Pajamas project that we're working on. We're converting the customer's portal to Pajamas currently and view simultaneously, and in that process, we found that some of our issues were incorrectly weighted. In 12.6, we still noted that four issues were incorrectly weighted and three of them rolled over to um, 12.7 and 12.8, which is a far too high of a ratio. We're trying to improve on that uh, ratio currently. And to do that, we're uh, changing our process of how we're doing grooming of issues to try to, to get better uh, feedback from the team. Previously, we're either having team members or myself weighed in uh, issues individually. And what we're gonna do going forward is a partially sync async a process where uh, we will assign issues to be weighted to team members ahead of our weekly status meeting. And then in the weekly status meeting, try to come to consensus on the weight of the issue to try to drive down a little bit deeper into potential issues with the weighting of the issue and try to come to a more accurate weight consensus. Uh, we're gonna continue tracking this. We just rolled this out in the most recent um, weekly staff meeting for uh, front end. And we'll continue to track this issue going forward in the next, uh, in the next uh, release. Cool. That's great to hear that uh, uh, both implemented, but also continuous improvement on that uh, and working iteratively. So really appreciate that, Chris. Uh, we'll move on to uh, the next one, which is around GDK seating work. Uh, I actually looked at this one uh, last yesterday. Uh, basically, it was elected to defer this one uh, for this release. Um, uh, we'll, we'll add it to track uh, to the next retro. Uh, ZJ, are you on the call to talk about number three? Doesn't look like ZJ is on the call. So uh, we'll go ahead and get uh, ZJ to update it, this uh, information async. Uh, he said it was on his list to basically uh, get addressed or basically give us an update, uh, but it looks like it hasn't happened yet. Uh, Mac, are you available? Yes, sir, I am. So uh, flaky pipelines and noisy uh, notifications in the development channel. So I'm happy to announce with the great work from the engineering project team, uh, we already fixed this. So now we create a new channel called Broken Master with the engineering project team being the DRI in charging. If it's a pipeline and common core, we'll fix it immediately. But if we need help from each and every other development teams or groups, we will fan out. And there's an SLO tied to um, these issues as well. And we will start measuring them. Uh, the next one I have is, oh, and since uh, it's less noisy now in development, we are encouraging people to join back and also unmute. We will make multimodal communications again in the company call, and uh, we already sent some of this in email, in email form. Uh, the last one, AC, uh, why code was merged with a static analysis failing. I believe um, this has been fixed uh, and confirmed by Remy, and um, this should be now correctly guarding uh, static analysis bugs. Back to you, Christopher. Thanks, Mac. Uh, great to see those updates around that. We definitely need to make sure our pipelines are getting better and better, uh, especially if we want to think about merge trains uh, for the main main branch. Uh, John, are you available to talk about the Stack Site Editor team? Yes, I am. Um, so 
One of the, the broader initiatives that I've been working on was looking at uh, our review uh, efficient code review efficiency. Um, we opened an epic with all the, the various kind of like uh, issues we identified that we'd like to, to touch on and to help improve our code review uh, performance. And uh, just in terms of uh, progress made, uh, we introduced the first response SLO and the review response SLO. Um, I've also added that to the uh, weekend review for, for engineering to, to have a look at for everybody. But essentially, uh, we've now formalized that uh, first review response and, and further reviewer uh, responses should happen within two business days. And in the documentation, we've got some uh, Kind of like instructions of what can happen if if you if you can't make the the risk the the deadline or uh, if somebody isn't able to respond within two days what the uh, author of the mr can do uh, next up uh, we've got nick uh, who has put up his hand to work on uh, measure and report on review times so we need to look at um, kind of like extending our our data that we can get for these to measure the uh, the impact that um that these changes have uh, on, on, on our review times. Um, Clement has also put up his hand to work on uh, establishing screen shared review sessions uh, for reviewers and authors to learn by example. Uh, so one of the best ways we found to teach people is to show them by example, and uh, he'll be working to put that in place. Um, the last one that I'll be working on uh, over the next month is to, um, is the consideration for having uh, maintainers with domain expertise. So we've had quite a lot of conversation around that and um, I'll be opening an MR with a proposal for that uh, over the next uh, week or so. Cool, thanks for that update, John. Uh, for those who missed uh, yesterday's group conversation, uh, we finally have uh, a breakout on psychoanalytics to actually review from when MR goes to review uh, to when it actually gets merged. Uh, so we'll be tracking this closely as well uh, at a global level to kind of see how these changes uh, work through it. Uh, John, it might be good to put these uh, down below as things that we kind of talk about for an update next uh, next month because it uh, feels like this is an important area of conversation, if you don't mind doing that. Cool. I'll do it. If, cool. I, if I may chime in, Christopher, I believe um, the UP team has some data on this already in Periscope. I'll, I'll link um, and show it in any dashboards you already have and also I'll pull John in. Yeah, excellent. I think it's the same ones I'm looking at, which is like, that's the one we want to see uh, times improve on, uh, both in average and in 90th percentile in particular, um, from that perspective. Thanks for that, Mac. Uh, cool. Uh, next one is an action item for myself. Uh, we were looking at the verification step specifically uh, at scale. Uh, we don't have the capabilities to uh, verify everything uh, going into production, particularly at our MR rate uh, currently, uh, though we do view it as important for significant features or for teams that feel uh, that information behind feature flags is still important. So we didn't want to remove the the actual step, what we want to do is make it optional uh, so that uh, for minor changes and for things that we feel are going to be auto, would be caught through normal regression failures, uh, you don't necessarily have to see that uh, uh, from a workflow verification perspective. Um, plus, uh, reproducing bugs uh, can be also tricky in a workflow verification aspect. Cool. Uh, now we move into the section where I talk extremely fast uh, around the areas of what went well this month and what went wrong, highlighting uh, kind of just uh, observations uh, from that perspective. Um, we'll try to leave as much time as we can at the end for the additional uh, how we're going to improve uh, section where we'll, we'll go back to the format before. Uh, so in the area of excuse me, in the area of what went well in collaboration, uh, it's important to note that there are several different instances of both inter and intra group uh, collaboration. So that's really good to see. I'm really glad to see that as part of uh, the the noting. Uh, in the efficiency section, we uh, love the new security process. Uh, this also includes our MR counts, uh, not artificially, but actual through work that we're doing because we're moving off of dev. Uh, super excited to see us use the feature both uh, for, uh, from a capability and uh, dog footing perspective, as well as uh, move us into a more consolidated base. So uh, that's good to see as well. And then uh, we have a definition of uh, how to use epics and issues for a given team, which is uh, important to, to get everybody on the same page. They, on the same page. Uh, in our results section, we have another uh, DB maintainer added. So we're down to three, super excited about that. Uh, to see us increasing the number there uh, to help with reviews. Um, 
we also had a research-based uh, MVC uh, for code review analytics happen, which is uh, also really good to see because uh, that'll help us be more efficient uh, and uh, delivering functionality as well as uh, delivering that actual functionality. And then uh, uh, another thing to note is point E where we have an example where the team is using the optional workflow verification. And that's been great at catching some uh, cases where uh, the feature hasn't been working quite as like as we would expect it. Uh, so that's excellent to see as well. I uh, want to call out uh, package line F, uh, basically um, using the planning priority label to make sure that the key deliverables are actually being executed on. And that definitely is a, a label that uh, folks should plan to use and is documented in the, the, the handbook uh, associated with that. And then uh, the refer reference architecture uh, actually increasing the number of reference architectures that we could certify by decreasing the times uh, spans that uh, we actually need to do the testing. So that's a, a great thing as well that we've been able to certify much more quickly associated with that. Um, and then last but not least in the results section, line J, uh, the secure team shipped more items than they slipped, uh, showing a, a good to a better say do ratio. Um, so excited to see that trend uh, being in the positive direction uh, for that. Related to planning, uh, one team in particular uh, defined their estimation process. Uh, it, you'll notice that uh, estimation processes are different from team to team. Um, that is a, a flexibility we do offer here at GitLab and excited to see that uh, the key aspect is that they're defining it so that within the team, they kind of understand that aspect of it. Uh, and then internal tooling, testing and internal tooling, uh, seen improvements in the review app stability. Uh, as well as uh, being able to uh, automate uh, performance comparisons with, between two GitLab for versions, which is really cool to see. Uh, so that if you wanna look at performance challenges, uh, you could basically compare two different versions uh, with that. So very cool uh, feature that uh, the testing team has created. Uh, now we move to what went wrong and uh, the what went wrong section is longer than the what went well and that's because we always focus on the challenges. That's not to say that uh, we aren't doing great stuff because we're doing lots of great stuff here. Uh, that's to say that's just where we focus our time on how we can improve. Uh, so highlights there uh, in the efficiency section, uh, pipeline failures has obviously been near and dear. Uh, to our minds of late and um, basically uh, working on addressing those. Uh, Stan, thank you for posting in there that uh, the, the, uh, we've worked to address this issue and it's important that we continue to keep, keep looking at that. The other thing uh, which I'll spend a little bit of time reviewing with uh, Rachel is uh, the access request taking a long time, making sure that uh, we get back on that and see that we have our SLAs uh, being met there uh, with our uh, sister sister teams uh, so that we can make sure the right things are happening. In the planning section, uh, a, a story that uh, is of special interest to me, uh, large MRs and uh, not getting to work done in the cycle. So it sounds like uh, we are fighting the normal challenges of any development team, which is we always have a tendency to, to make things bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, we are a very iterative company. We wanna try to push it to be smaller and smaller, and smaller. Um, so want to make sure that that happens associated with it. Uh, in the deployment section, it looks like we have some regression failures associated with the bot notifications. Uh, not regressions, I should say, but uh, some consistency challenges uh, with it. So it looks like we need to dig in there a little bit and understand uh, what's going on and why uh, it's missing some MRs associated with that. Documentation. Uh, 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 another area that we probably want to think about improving on as well. Uh, some MRs are being submitted without the appropriate uh, documentation. So we'll need to look at that aspect as well. And then uh, in the results section, uh, we had to revert the key set pagination. Uh, could have been caught in staging. Uh, this is section 5A for those who are trying to keep up with me. Um, that kind of caught my attention as well uh, in regards to us thinking in terms of what additional things can we catch in staging before we actually get it out to production. Uh, in the regression section, uh, 6A, uh, noting the fact that um, uh, we're tra transitioning from Ruby to Golang for the GitLab shell. And as part of that, we've had some regressions related to that 
as part of that. So that's uh, another case where uh, we'll have to be thinking about in terms of as we transition certain parts of our code base from Ruby to Go, how do we make sure we don't uh, regress those pieces of it? Uh, and then in the testing section, um, as above, we have some pipeline challenges and uh, a defend has been having some growing pains uh, related to the fact that their coverage is, is not as, as strong though. Uh, to understand that to understand that situation, uh, I wanna call out that that team is extremely new uh, past couple months. Uh, and because of that, you know, we're, we're, we're just starting and because of that we should iterate uh, and be embarrassed about our iteration. Uh, this is a good example of the team calling themselves out uh, from that perspective and appreciate it. Great. Uh, I somehow managed to say all that within a 15 minute time span. So that leaves us uh, 10 minutes to talk about how we can improve and any action items we want to track for the next uh, retro. So we'll start off with uh, Thomas. Can you talk about collaboration? Sure thing. So during our a practice that we have started using within Secure during our weekly stage wide meetings is making sure that we're taking time to celebrate issues that are that are being closed within a within a given iteration. The the challenge that we've started that we realized during this past uh, uh, over December uh, or during 12.6 was that the list of issues that we were closing was getting quite long um, and as a result was causing a number of folks to just ignore that portion of our agenda. So we wanted to make sure that we're we want to focus this a bit more because we want to continue to celebrate uh, issues that we are realizing uh, during the course of an iteration, but we're going to focus the what we're going to call out to those that are features or if they're high priority bugs. And we're also going to start, we're, we're planning to start experiment with just uh, demos as part of a closure gate, uh, just to just really quick, get them involved with it, get them into the issue themselves and just making sure that we're calling out the usage and demonstrating that it's uh, working as a part of the way that we're celebrating things that we're shipping. That's that was something that was noted out noted, and we've got a tracking issue that we're beginning to start working towards. Uh, that is within this item as well for the folks that are curious. Cool, thanks, Thomas. I uh, put it down below. I uh, hope that's a good one to talk about next time because it feels like that's a good uh, sharing. If that turns out to be a successful way to do that, we may want to think about other teams uh, leveraging that same type of model. Uh, Gabe, are you available to articulate uh, uh, for plan? I am, yeah, and this is in response to Sean's uh, note above about things that didn't go so well. Um, and it was more around the fact that we have our weights range capped at five, kind of hides hidden uh, complexities or makes it easier to do so. Like you might have something that it's a true five, but since that's the highest weight that we assign, uh, it also means that a five could be a 13 or something larger. And um, it, I think, extending the um, weight range out to something like the Fibonacci sequence, maybe capping it at 13 or 20, would allow for more collaboration and discussion about how to break larger issues down. Um, and then also basically looking and saying, if anything is greater than a three, we should probably stop and figure out how we can chunk it down into smaller NPCs. Um, I think that is one of the challenges that we're facing right now and something that we could improve upon. Um, and I've also historically, uh, estimated in ideal days, um, which makes it a little bit more uh, tangible um, to understand like how long something could possibly take given an ideal day and no blockers, no unknowns and everything is clear. Um, but I think the response from Dan makes a lot of sense too. Like they're using the one through 13 um, and manage and it's working well. So I think this is something worth trying out to see if that improves collaboration between engineering and product and design. Cool, thanks, Gabe. Uh, John Hope, you're coming for Charlie, I believe. Uh, yeah, this one's pretty straightforward. It's just um, as we put more and more of our features into GraphQL on the back end, there are fewer reasons to uh, couple the work in MRs. Uh, since the last ret retro, we've been looking at how we can improve our throughput. Uh, so we're going to keep an eye on this among other things but um yeah it should there should be very few circumstances where we have to do both the front end and the back end in one mr if it involves graphql cool thanks john uh dan you're up yeah this is just kind of a quick thing um you know any issue out there has the risk of being sort of an iceberg where the 10 percent you see doesn't really tell you about the 90 percent you don't um, so I'm actually on the analytics team and we've just been helping out with some security issues in uh, manage. So 
I think Access, the Access team already knows about this, but it's something that was kind of a surprise, I think, to us analytics developers was that uh, these security issues that exist tend to be, uh, you know, like at least 50% of the time icebergs of, uh, there are a lot of edge cases and, and little things that uh, people don't notice and end up blowing up these issues into bigger things. So just kind of something, uh, you know, I thought was worth sort of sharing was that if you encounter a security issue, um, you know, uh, maybe increase your, your assumed risk of it being an iceberg. Thanks for sharing. Um, do, do you know if we have that documented anywhere in the handbook? I don't know that we do. It might be good to go back. Can you take an action to, uh, we won't track it, but can you take an action to go back and see if we don't have it in the handbook? You're at a good place, but I think it's important that uh, we kind of make that at least known in some fashion. Sure thing. I'll do that. Cool. Thanks. Uh, Craig, you're up. Yeah, so this was a quote by Matthias during our retro, and um, this month was especially interrupt-driven, sorry, this milestone was especially interrupt-driven for the memory team, and I thought it was a great quote from Matthias about focusing on breaking down big problems, iterating on it, and um, while we're doing that, part of the memory team charter to start building out, building out proactive tooling so we can get notification earlier in the life cycle that, hey, maybe there's a memory performance degradation um, and just keep those in mind while we're fixing those problems so that we can be more proactive. So great co quote from Matthias and just wanted to put it here. Cool, that's that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Craig. And that's a good reminder for us. Uh, there's a, uh, on the top of the engineering page, there's in uh, discussion or a section that talks about uh, efficiency and things should just work uh, fixing problems. So if uh, you're an engineer and you see something that's broken and you feel like it needs to be addressed and it takes less than a half a day to fix, you should uh, spend the time to go uh, work on that MR and make it happen. Um, and we even have a label for it, which I think is things should just work. Uh, and we're going to start tracking that uh, label uh, because uh, we think that uh, it's important that uh, we give engineers the capability both to chip away at problems and also to solve them. Um, cool. Uh, Stephen Wilson, are you available? Yes, sir. Um, we recently started using the deliverable workflow automation. Previously, our projects weren't in, uh, in, in the workflow. Um, it gave us some great uh, visibility into things that are slipping. Going forward, we're going to try to understand the themes behind things that are slipping. Um, to, to get better at, at per, being predictable. Uh, that's, that's really about it. Our, our numbers are, uh, I would say somewhat not poor, but they're not as high as we would like them to be. Uh, previously, we just didn't have a lot of visibility into it. And, and now we're at least at a stage where we understand, um, you know, and have visibility to, to both where we are and, and how we improve. Cool. Um, <clears throat> I wonder if this is one that uh, we should report back on next uh, time just to say whether it worked well or whether it didn't work well, that kind of thing. Like I'm not looking for, you know, gotcha. we improved as much as I'm looking for here are the things that worked well about it or didn't work well about it. Uh, gotcha. Yeah, we can add something there. We're all, we also have an OKR to track um, our, our overall just raw numbers. Uh, previously I was doing that manually and of course it's great to have labeling in there so that I uh, spend less time, um, you know, spelunking and, and more just running reports with labeling. So but we can take it a step further and, and, and try to share some of the themes. And what cool. We if you want to update, uh, if, if updating your OKR is the easy way to do it, and you just want to put a link to that below, and then we can just talk about it uh, at the next retro. Uh, Sounds in, good. In that context. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Elliot Rushton, Rushton is not here, so I'll verbalize his, which is he's uh, digging deeper when investigating implementation details and issues that have not been groomed, uh, uh, basically working through that aspect of it. Uh, cool. Uh, on to efficiency. Uh, Jerome, are you available? Yeah. Um, so far on the growth acquisition team, uh, we defined a lot of our processes this uh, milestone. Uh, one other thing that we want to work on is uh, meeting discipline. So uh, running our weekly sync meetings in a similar fashion to how our group conversations are run, where agendas are filled out beforehand, meetings start um, 30 seconds afterwards, and uh, they're very efficient. So. Uh, that's one thing which we're working on. Cool, thank you. Uh, Michelle. Yeah, uh, our note is sort of about the feature flag documentation, which does exist, um, but it's just not very efficient. We're not able to hold ourselves accountable to following it. Um, and we noticed this because we've had to revert a, a handful of release posts the past few releases. 
um, things where the issue was closed, we verify that it was working and we release the release post. And then we found out that it's actually behind a feature flag and it's not turned on. Um, and there's no clear, super easy way to tell. Um, the only really good way to tell if it's behind a feature flag and it's off is to talk to the actual engineer who did it. Um, so we wanna be more efficient. I linked a tracking issue there. I still need to fill out some more details on that, but we have a few proposals already that I think would work. Um, one of them is to update the MR template so that we can just specify that, as well as holding ourselves more accountable to using the feature flag label. Um, and we'd like to get, get some other ideas there as well to sort of track that moving forward, see how we can improve. Thanks, Michelle. I added to talk about a, the next retro. I feel like it's a good one for us to kind of revisit and see how things are going. Thank you. Cool. Uh, Thomas, you're up. Alrighty. So within Defend, one of the things that was noted during this during 12.6 is that multiple folks are continuing to struggle setting up auto DevOps and make it work locally with GDK. Um, so the reason we posted, posted this within efficiency is that this was really slated as more of an onboarding challenge within the uh, within the group, um, and that we're one of the things we're looking at is creating a more straightforward guide for making this combination of work getting it set up uh, and more coherent so we can follow it uh, more easily and make it more repeatable and composable, at least from a documentation standpoint. And so that's uh, that's something we're we're looking for time and, we're, and when we'll be working towards this uh, during this iteration. Cool. Thanks, uh, Thomas. Uh, CZ, are you available to articulate yours? Yes. Uh, so, um... During the time when we, when we really enabled the uh, search uh, GitLab uh, dot com, and uh, I think uh, uh, didn't assume some like option to work uh, uh, for getting that done. I think that went uh, well, uh, and uh, it speeds things up. Uh, I think, but in the long run, uh, we would like to um, to think about the best practice between us and the infrastructure team uh, to find the best practice. Uh, and also a uh, few uh, improvements that we have identified that we can that, uh, we can do is to maybe add more uh, monitoring stuff to give us more visibilities uh, to the stuff and uh, hopefully uh, that will uh, help us and also other teams including infrastructure team to get uh, more feedback about thing, uh, about how things going if things goes wrong we can find it hopefully quickly Cool. That uh, sounds great. Uh, Mac, you have the next item? Sure. So this is regarding the CI incident that happened uh, during the holidays. Um, it was caught by our tests, but it was an escalated in timely fashion. We are currently having a rapid action that is aiming to stabilize all the end-to-end -end tests that, that runs on staging and potentially have it guard their all, all, every deploy going forward. So, uh, when, we, when I look at this, it's also clear that there, there are some scenarios that can be tested by unit integration because I believe the CI was passing and we trust the engineers, trust our CI before we merge. And in addition, we need to improve test planning after looking through, I believe that um, uh, quality and, and, and our SCTs, our software engineers and tests weren't involved er earlier in the planning because if, uh, an easy fix for this is if it's a, a change that's cross-cutting please monitor staging results when you're changing to staging that we could easily cut it. So these are some of the improvement points that, uh, that, we'll, that we'll be looking at. And we have an RCA with a, with a, with a customer as well next week on, on, on this incident. Um, the next one is that we, in addition to this tightly related, we also updated our triaging priorities. So we will now triage um, staging first because it's tightly coupled with the deployment. I believe before we were doing master and also production as well. But so right now our priority is to get staging results clear as soon as possible. Uh, back to you, Christopher. Thanks, Mick. Uh, both of those are uh, great things that we need to work on improving. Obviously RCA is gonna give us a, a hyper focus on making sure those get addressed more quickly. Uh, cool, we're short on time. So I'm gonna quickly go over the, at least the ones I caught. Uh, one was, uh, um, uh, the new process changes secures thinking about because uh, it feels like that might be uh, nice to share uh, updates on that. The feature flag tracking um, 
uh, which uh, Michelle's putting in place it has a tracking issue, so that's great to see. Uh, the deliverable workflow progress, uh, which will pull in uh, either the OKR or whichever uh, item Stephen gives us. Um, and then uh, for the CI runner incident, uh, this feels like a gimme, but I like gimme sometimes uh, as well uh, uh, in regards to the fact of, uh, you know, it's an RCA, so hopefully all the progress is completed by next time. Let's just double check back on the retro if you're okay with that, Mac. Yes, that sounds good. We have a lot, so I'll just take action point on updating the group on, on what has been done. Cool. And then uh, two carryover items, uh, the GDK seeding work and then uh, the improving of code review efficiency also included. Uh, are there any action, I know we're at time, but are there any action items that uh, folks want to see for improvements for next time that they want to call out? Thanks. I appreciate everybody's time and everybody's hard work. Uh, really great retro. Uh, we went a few seconds over, but uh, we'll work to improve for next time. Thanks, everybody.